It's been around two years now that I've been involved in real estate investing, and I must say it is pretty addictive. Just like with stock investing, when I first started, I simply could not get enough. And now scaling out my property portfolio is pretty much always on my mind in one way or another. So although both are considered to be investing, what's different about stock and property investing is the fact that with real estate, it is quite a bit more hands-on, which personally, I don't necessarily mind. And the idea of upgrading a property in a tangible manner to therefore be able to increase the rents and the overall market value of the property is something that is quite rewarding. But over time, as I've added more properties to the portfolio and increased their market values, I've realized that this has resulted in my global investment portfolio being somewhat out of whack or balance from what most would consider a properly balanced and weighted portfolio. Right, when it comes to a stock market portfolio specifically, most investors try to maintain a certain balance and ratio between their equity and their fixed income positions. And over time, as equities and the values in the market of both their fixed income and and equity instruments change, well, they try to reallocate and reposition their portfolio in a way that can bring it back to that desired asset allocation split. But when you start throwing property into the mix, just by the nature of this asset class and the current cost of property, it's almost inevitable that your portfolio from pretty much one day to the next will most likely become extremely real estate heavy over your paper assets. With that said, I'd like to thank today's video sponsor, Addy, but more on that later. The reality is that I often speak about real estate investing and the idea of owning at least one or two properties in your overall portfolio at some point down the line, which I still fully stand by. But last week, I had the chance to go on a podcast that was more focused towards real estate investing. And the host, knowing very well, having watched my content, that I invest both in real estate as well as the stock market, asked me, well, hey, what is your asset allocation split right now between all your paper assets and your real estate portfolio? And on the spot, I actually didn't really know this answer down to the T. I just had sort of a guesstimate. So naturally, after the podcast, I quickly hopped over to my net worth tracker and realized, well, based on the current equity in my properties and the current market value of said properties, I actually had around 60% of my portfolio be allocated towards the equity in my properties. And that's over uh, other paper assets like, for example, stocks, ETFs, REITs, and pretty much just cash. And on the spot, I actually didn't know the answer down to the T. I just sort of had a guesstimate. So naturally, after that call, I quickly jumped over to my net worth tracker. And considering the current equity that I have in those properties, and also considering the current market value of those properties, I quickly realized that actually around 60% of my global portfolio was comprised of equity in my properties. And then that's over the around 40% that is tied up in other paper assets like stocks, ETFs, as well as then, well, just cash. But as we know from real estate, that 60% is just the equity held in those properties. That's not actually the market value of the properties in question. And the appreciation in the market that you're receiving on your properties is based on its market value. So say, for example, your house is worth 400,000. Even if you have $100,000 of equity built in the property, well, that doesn't really matter in terms of the appreciation you'll be experiencing on it. If the market goes up by 5%, that's going to be 5%, not on your 100K, but on your 400,000. And so that's why the market value is what matters in terms of the asset value in your portfolio. So when actually taking this into consideration, the property portfolio actually has a market value of right around $1.8 million spread out across the different properties, which would place real estate at a weight of right around 85% of my total portfolio. And under the traditional narrative of asset allocation, location and a portfolio that might actually be problematic. In fact, I remember watching a video that Graham Stephan had made with Kevin O'Leary reviewing his investment portfolio. And Kevin's main point was that Graham's portfolio was way too concentrated towards real estate, more specifically real estate from one single market. Without knowing who you were, I'd say this guy is too much real estate. Okay. And of course, I'm not going to criticize what Kevin has to say here. The guy is way more successful than me, has a lot more business experience, and has had the time to ride through economic cycles. But based on what I've been able to accomplish, well, I don't necessarily see the problem with having a much higher concentration of your portfolio towards one single asset class, especially when you're first starting out, and also especially if that asset class is cash flowing real estate. The reality is that if you own property, you're most likely going to be purchasing that property in one single market, being the market that 
that you know best. And I actually think that this is an advantage, especially when you're first starting out. Yes, your cash is tied up into one single immovable asset, but it allows you to gain access right out of the gate to cash flow, which most likely will be much higher than a dividend income, as well as debt pay down by your tenants and appreciation on the market value of the property. And the fact that you can make a return on your leveraged up capital in a much more secure manner through real estate at a lower interest rate is what's really powerful with real estate investing over stock market investing, where traditionally, unless you're taking higher levels of risk and using margin in the stock market, well, you're most likely going to be making a return only on your invested capital. For example, Graham would probably not be where he is right now had he not leveraged up his money on those first fixer upper properties that he did most of the stuff himself. On the other hand, had he just brought turnkey properties at market value, then yeah, that most likely would not have made sense in his early 20s. And that's pretty much the same case for me. Another thing to consider that I don't think Kevin really appreciated here since he's not heavy in real estate, at least he wasn't in his 20s, is the fact that with real estate, you can treat it a lot more as an active business. So with Kevin looking at this from his own view with decades of experience under his belt and most likely hundreds of millions of dollars invested, well, this wouldn't really make sense to allocate such a high concentration of his portfolio to one single asset class, in this case, real estate. So yeah, in his context, I agree this wouldn't really make sense. However, in the context of a newer investor with a much smaller portfolio, I view this as more of concentrating my investment and cash towards my business. And so for that reason, it doesn't phase me as much to have say 85% in one asset class and because it's a business that I'm trying to continue fueling and growing. If someone had say 85% of their entire portfolio all in one single stock, that would probably be a different story. Now, considering everything that we just mentioned with rising property prices and the fact that this can be much more of a hands on venture, well, physical real estate does inherently come with a higher barrier to entry. So by popular audience response and in an effort to make real estate investing more accessible to Canadians, I once again teamed up with the Canadian property investing company Addy, which is a platform that completely eliminates the barrier to entry for real estate investing and allows everyday investors such as you and I to invest in specific properties that are split up into purchasable shares within their platform. This is the third time that I speak about Addy and during this period, they have launched six properties on their platform platform around one bi-weekly and they've consistently sold out because they are great opportunities. Unlike with a real estate investment trust where you're investing into a trust that has dozens or even hundreds of properties that you don't necessarily have much information on, Addy allows you to specifically invest into the properties that interest you based on your goals. The way it works is that Addy takes an investment position in properties with a specific strategy in mind and then they release it on their platform, allowing it its members to become part owners of the property up to a maximum $1,500 investment per property. Since last time, Addy launched three new properties, two of which were opportunistic type properties with the goal of creating new housing in the Niagara region and in BC. The most recent addition to the catalog was 29 Harriet Street in Hamilton, Ontario, which was a value add investment type with a projected internal rate of return of 33.1% over an estimated two year term. What's crazy is that this property sold out in only 63 minutes, but again, they tried to add a new property to the platform every two weeks. And in the meantime, you can browse their catalog of past properties. What's really awesome about Addy is that there are no management fees that you're paying on your invested capital. They simply charge members a $25 per year membership, and then members can freely invest into the properties of their choice. So if this is something that might interest you as an alternative to physical real estate investing, make sure to check out the link down below to Addy's website, and you can start adding property to your portfolio today. Back to the video, something I've realized over the past couple of years is that most successful investors and business owners get their eventually not necessarily through insane diversification, which is a lot better for preserving the wealth they already have. Rather, they go all in and concentrate their efforts on one or two ventures specifically. And this is actually the case also for Kevin himself. All of this to say that in my actual paper asset portfolio, yeah, I like to follow a somewhat loose uh, allocation split that's heavily focused towards equities. And that's what I'm comfortable with based on my current investor profile and tolerance for risk. 
But if you aspire to start purchasing physical real estate, get ready for a portfolio that is highly concentrated towards a handful of assets only. That's just the name of the game. And if you aren't comfortable with that, well, there are still a couple of options available to you so you can still get exposure to real estate in your portfolio. For example, you could use a platform like Addy that we spoke about earlier, or if you want even further diversification and liquidity to your asset, well, you could go for an REIT or an ETF REIT, both of which could be great options. Naturally, these alternative options to real estate would allow for a lot more flexibility and also uh, a specific amount of money allocated towards real estate in question on a much smaller scale than with a full-blown physical property. Investing in an REIT in an open market for sure is a completely different type of investment than physical real estate. However, it still does offer that option and provides exposure to real estate that might otherwise actually not be accessible to everyday investors. An REIT ETF option that I recently spoke about on the channel was the VNQ ETF offered by Vanguard. It is the Vanguard Real Estate ETF. It has a very low management expense ratio of only 0.12% and exposes you to over 170 individual real estate companies at over $80 billion in assets under management. And in the Canadian market, one of my favorite individual REITs is the Granite REIT, ticker symbol GRT UN, which invests in industrial properties such as warehouses, logistics, and distribution centers, and overall just property that I alone could never access at my stage in business and investing. So considering everything that we covered in today's video, I still very much value having a multitude of asset classes in my overall investment portfolio. That's why even with a high concentration towards real estate right now, I still continuously allocate funds towards my paper asset portfolio every single month. With that said, make sure to let me know down in the comments whether or not you'd be comfortable allocating such a high concentration of your portfolio towards one single asset class and whether or not you hold real estate right now in your portfolio. If you want to learn more about real estate investing, make sure to check out all the other videos currently available on my channel and smash the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Also, don't forget to take a look at the links to resources I use and recommend down in the description. For example, you can get $25 for free if you open up a Wellsimple Cash account. That's literally $25 for free for doing absolutely nothing. We also have links to high interest savings accounts such as EQ Bank and other platforms such as Addy, which I would highly recommend you also check out. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one.